Hey, welcome back. So recently I've been spending a lot of time in the metaverse and one of the things that I've realized on that journey is that open source gaming engine technologies, specifically in the back end, is gonna form a fundamental part of our digital enterprise architecture in the future. In fact, it's probably gonna be as important as our CRM commerce or CMS platforms. And in fact, these technologies will form together to form our new digital platform ecosystem. Let me show you what I mean from within the central line. Okay, to show you how that works, let's drop into the central land for a second. So I'm in the central land at the moment. Now, what I'm talking about doesn't relate specifically to the central land. This applies to any uh, metaverse platform that exists, whether today or in the future. But I think the central land is a perfect example of where these concepts come to life. So this is my avatar at the moment. You can see it's a very cool looking avatar. It's meant to represent me. It's got sunglasses, hair, etc. But as you can see, within the central land, I can just move my avatar around there. And you can see that it's, it's it can see a board there, which is most expensive single parcel. Now, let me explain a little bit what's going on here for a second, because I think this will help us make sense here. So in the central land, this is, I'm on a piece of land at the moment. And on that piece of land, the landowner can do whatever they want. This landowner has uh, created these little sort of digital billboard type things. And you can see the sort of land market spinning around and around. What's really happening underneath is it's making an API call. So it's an API powered component. Think of it like a kind of smart component of some sort. So when when builders are building this, they're, they're gonna create these experiences but actually, if you think about what's happening under the hood is you've got these 3D models that they've created, but then they're being powered by backend APIs. So that's really important there. But I'm in this world where I can move my avatar around and uh, the avatar can look at things, it can interact, etc. So the position is kind of known and there's a kind of consistent experience. So that's all pretty cool stuff, but actually, if you think about this experience, it's almost like the real world as well, right? And what I mean by that is I'm in a world. So when I'm looking at a board there, if I then interact with another avatar or there's another avatar in the room, I should be able to see where they are. They should be having the same experience as I have. I, it shouldn't be a disconnected and siloed experience. I shouldn't be in this room and looking at this board and then somebody else is in the same room and I can't see them, they can't interact with me or they're looking at something different on the board or they're having a different experience. That's, that would be really weird because that's not what we have in the physical world. So what we need to have is this combined experience and, and that's something that gaming engines understand really well. They understand this world of game state. They understand this world of low latency ability to transmit uh, where everybody is, their positions and what the state of the board is so everybody can have consistent experience and do it in an authoritative manner. So if I come back to an enterprise perspective, rather than us going and building our own custom service to handle that sort of logic, then we should be leaning into some of those open source game servers uh, that exist today. And, and the ones at the top of my mind are things like Kalesis, which is very lightweight and open source, or Agonis, which is created by Google. In fact, they run a cloud gaming service that you can use off the back of that. And, and then finally, Nakama, which is probably one of the most mature game engines that exist. But regardless, rather than doing those custom build implementations, because these game engines have the ability to handle things like sessions and rooms and game state management and be able to do that at low latency with speed, then that's a capability rather than you wanting to build, you should really be buying and then using that in the same way as you would be doing with a, a, a CRM solution or a commerce solution. So. Let me let me run around a bit for a, a little bit more in the central land, and I'm going to move my avatar around. And then what I'm going to do is just change what my avatar is looking at. And you can see now my avatar uh, can see another avatar called uh, Dog uh, Five Nine One. 
And Dog591 is looking at the board here with cheapest parcel on sale now in the market, 138. So, and it tells you the owner. So that's what I was saying about APIs. It's, you know, it's getting the real time uh, uh, cheapest parcel available and it's got the real time who the owner of that is going to be, right? So myself and Dog should be having the same experience. When we look at that board, we should say the same thing. And the fact that dog turns around, you know, dog should be able to see me as well. So let's let's actually do that because dog is actually one of my other avatars. So if I uh, just bring this down a little bit and we'll just uh, resize this a little bit here, you can see there both my set, you know, both that uh, dog and uh, who's over here on the right hand side and we'll find out that this is rabbit in a second. They are looking at the same board. But but now, if I turn, uh, if I pick up dog here for a second, and I start moving dog around, you can see that on rabbit's board, right, uh, dog has disappeared, right? And then if we just move rabbit a little bit more, uh, it should appear in the screen. So we're having this sort of real-time low latency interaction. In fact, if if I then select Rabbit here, and we will get Rabbit to uh, turn around. And as you can see, now Dog is facing Rabbit and Rabbit is facing Dog. But but of course, uh, Dog can't see, see the screen, but they're now both looking at each other and they can see each other as they, they move around. And if, if I switch uh, back to the other screen and move Rabbit, you can see that's interacting in dog screen as well. The key point about this is we've got two avatars operating in the same world. And in order for that to happen, there needs to be something that is managing the game state. Now, of course, when I talk about game state in this case, I'm not meaning this is specifically a limited to games. I'm meaning this works for any experience. So if we weren't in this sort of trading market, but we were in some sort of uh, virtual store, then that game state becomes important as well, right? Because actually, if I'm having this uh, social commerce, friends buying together experience, so let's say myself and a couple of friends are going to go into a virtual store and we're gonna buy some goods together, then you know what? We wanna have that same experience. We wanna be able to see the same thing, see each other, have a conversation, right? And that's actually one of the things that you can do in this environment, and we're gonna do that as well, because they're in the same room, and because technologies such as WebSockets are supported, you can then have essentially a party line, right? You can, you can converse with each other via text, you can converse via audio, and that audio can go back and forward, and that could be a human-to-human -human conversation. But it also means that within this this uh, within this room within this scene, you could also have uh, virtual AI. You could have chatbots who are going to participate in the conversation, or you could have something like virtual assistants, um, uh, whether human or AI powered, in the conversation uh, talking. You could be interacting with the objects. Um, so maybe that that object there, the billboard, uh, would speak and have audio, and then you could converse with it. Well, that would be possible as well. But that's all part of a room. And then if that was speaking or having some sort of audio, then the people in the room should have the same experience at the same time with the same latency, right? And that's why this sort of state management, low latency ability to handle the web sockets, which is all technology that comes from open source game engines, that's why that becomes super important because this is gonna be just as important part of your digital platforms as your CMSs and your commerce platforms of today. In fact, as I said before, they're gonna to work together in this hybrid fashion. Now, you could build these in a custom fashion, but that's a lot of effort, right? And, and, and it's problems that have already been solved by the gaming engines. So I think in the future world, I think gaming engines are gonna stop calling themselves gaming engines, and they're probably gonna transition to being world engines or verse engines, right? Because they're gonna be required in the enterprise and in, in, in as much as they are from gaming. So I think I think that's a shift that we're gonna see uh, in our technology landscape of, of how these companies interact and they're gonna become part of our typical enterprise IT architecture. Now I did say before that this is gonna become a hybrid world and I genuinely believe that because actually in these verses, so let's take this, uh, this example here in Decentraland, 
your typical content management, your personalization and your analytics software is going to become super important in this world as well. So let me explain what I mean here as well. So I'm in this channel at the moment. Uh, you know, we're having this social commerce type experience where we've got two people, we can interact, we can have conversations, we, we can talk with each other and that'd be powered by those open source gaming engines. But actually, one of the things that's going to become important is rather than having these generic experiences where it says something like cheapest parcel on site and, and, and returning back a sort of generic API, you can imagine that this starts to become powered by components over digital platforms. Let me explain what I mean. So here, maybe uh, rather than it being a billboard in this sense, maybe it's some sort of browsable uh, information board. Well, in that sense, that could be powered by a content management system. So whether it's something like your Adobe Experience Managers, your content polls, whatever, which currently power the content on your websites, well, that could be powering the content on some of these information boards or billboards. The same ad tech that is powering the, the banner adverts on your, uh, on your websites, etc. today, could be powering the adverts that appear in these worlds. And in fact, when you start to think about things like offer management, so in the same way as you wander around the web and you get offers that say, hey, buy this for you know 10% off, or you know, this is in your cart and all that sort of thing, that same technologies, those ad technologies for personalization can then start to power these billboards as well. So if as I said before, they're smart components and, and the components are aware of the avatars in the room. So again, if, we, if you come back to this board, you see rabbit 83A5 and then in this one here, it says dog 4591. Well, that board is gonna know that rabbit and dog is in the same room. So therefore, if it has built up a single view to customer, if that avatar is linked to your CRM systems, for example, or your customer data platforms, then you would be able to start doing specific offers for customers that you know via these billboards and actually start doing targeted adverts, right? So that's a, that's a world that, that's coming and we can talk about the ethics, et cetera, uh, involved in that. And I think that's something as an industry we need to figure out. But, but that is, that is something that's potentially coming. But, but it's not just on linking adverts in that sense for the known customers. It also happens for the unknowns because let's say I've got two or three people in the room there. Maybe from a wearable perspective, you can see both my avatars are wearing sunglasses. Well, you know, it could take a scan of the room and say, actually, there's 10 people in this room. They're all wearing sunglasses. So it would make sense to start personalizing adverts uh, to sunglasses. So the adverts could change or the content could change based on the attributes of the avatars that are in the room at that point in time, even if they're unknown. It could be that maybe they've got a Gucci bag and then suddenly you get Gucci adverts, the latest Gucci offer, etc. And then those interactions are going to come back to your back end systems as well. So I think I think those digital platforms, so things like your personalization platforms, your content management platforms, your commerce platforms, you know, and things that are doing your offer decisioning and your analytics platforms, they're all going to start to hook together so that we can start driving these personalized experiences. And again, I'm mentioning Decentraland at the moment because you can see that that is possible today in Decentraland. But actually, it's not specific to Decentral and this could happen in any world. So I think I think we're going to get ourselves into a whole sort of advertising uh, space pretty soon on 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 how to personalize and and capture data, etc. So it's going to be an interesting world there. But regardless, as I said, social experiences, the ability to have shared experiences with folks, both in virtual worlds and outside of worlds is a key thing, right? It's this idea of social commerce is already happening today. So if you think of things like Netflix, you already have that ability to go and watch movies together, uh, can, you know, with that shared state and that with low latency. So you are having the same experience at the same time. Friends buying together, both in the virtual world or even in the web world and having conversations that's a thing of today as well. So in order to power these experiences, of course, you need your content management platforms, your commerce platforms, et cetera, but you need something to manage that game state. And you also need that ability to have those conversations and have functionality like party lines, the ability to have chat capabilities and, and all of the controls uh, around that to have authenticated experiences and manage permissions, et cetera. And that's all functionality that come from these game servers. So 
I, I do think that game servers is going to form a big part of a digital estate today, and that's going to be an interesting and fun experience. So in future videos, I'm going to explore some of these platforms such as uh, Kalesis, et cetera, to be able to show how you can start to in bring those technologies into your digital architecture and your uh, platforms today. And we're, we're going to have a lot of fun doing that. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful and we'll speak soon.